it is possible to extend <coughs> our usage of transfer functions to other kind of inputs. We can, for example, replace the input e to the j omega t by e to the s0 times t from t ranging from 0 to infinity. What we will see is that at the output the response of the system will be the same as before formally which is that it will be h of s0 times 1 over s minus s0 okay so if this is f which will replace by that f a complex input then x hat the response to the system will be this okay and so we find that the response involves the value of the transfer function at <coughs> the value s0 which is if you will the frequency of excitation now x will be made of two terms <coughs> a term that goes towards zero provided the system is stable and of course that is as time turns towards infinity plus a steady state term which will be of the kind h of s0 e to the s0 times t now notice that if the real part of s0 is less than 0 then this term also turns towards 0 when t turns towards infinity however by similarity with what we have seen with sinusoidal and cosinusoidal inputs we will nevertheless often call this term the steady state response and this one the transient response of the system. Now, I would like that we build a deeper understanding of what all this means. For that reason, I would like to go back to
to the general response in the time domain of a system such as the one that we have seen so far. That is our mass spring system. Our mass spring system, which I have down here, what does it do? It takes an input F, which I will draw here, that starts at time is equal to zero. And then Note that F could be anything. And then the system reacts to it. Now, I would like you to think of F the following way. I would like you to think of F not as a nice continuous curve, as you see, but as a sequence of small impulses of varying intensities. Let's assume that the impulses are separated by a certain time epsilon. The first question I'm asking is what would the effect of replacing F by these impulses do in terms of the way integrals of f might be computed. Integrals from any bound to any bound. So, as I said, these are little deltas, you know, of t minus uh, t minus k times epsilon multiplied by some number multiplied by I would call that a sub k that would be the first impulse, the second impulse, the third impulse, the fourth impulse, etc., etc. Now, the k times epsilon is because, yes, this impulse hits with a time delay of k times epsilon. Now, if I were to compute the integral of f, times any function which we will call C from 0 to whatever bound M you might be interested in then I can write that this is, and we, we're going to use the standard um, piecewise standard, piecewise constant approximations. We can rewrite that as sum from k equals 1 to 
m over epsilon and we can take the upper value of this okay so we do approximations piecewise constant approximation at every step epsilon so f is like this then like that then like this then like that etc etc it's sort of a staircase approximation of f okay then we can rewrite that this integral i apologize will be equal to the sum from k equals 1 to m divided by epsilon and we're going to take the nearest integer of f of k times epsilon delta sorry xi of we're going to go with the same approximation, k times epsilon. Now suppose that instead we are to compute the same integral, but it would be the integral of the sum of these little guys here, these little spikes, these little deltas. Okay, the integral from 0 to m of these little deltas. The sum from k equals 1 to some big number. Okay, let's say if it goes to infinity, okay, we'll write it infinity. Of delta of t minus k epsilon times my famous a case. times c i would find that this is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to m over epsilon at least the approximate to it okay uh or the the, the nearest integer of what of C expressed at k times epsilon times a k. So I need to compare this expression with that expression. Before I do this, I must correct something. When we do the piecewise constant approximation, we need to, of course, take the width of the approximating rectangle, and therefore we need to multiply this by epsilon. Now, if we compare these terms, With these terms, and since we want the two expressions to be about the same for any C, we can set the A case to be equal to F of k epsilon times epsilon by doing so we have an approximation of f by means of impulses and my f becomes f of t becomes sum from k 
is equal to 1 through infinity of delta of t minus k epsilon times f of k epsilon times epsilon. Okay, and of course, this is an approximate expression for f. However, the value of this approximation is to express or to allow us to generate a semi-analytic expression for the response of the system to the input f. To be more precise, we're going to store this and we're going to go back to the response of our system to an impulse. From the reflections we have led so far, we know that the response of the system to a delta is x hat of s is equal to, so let me rewrite this, x hat of s is equal to h of s. The transfer function itself times 1, which is the Laplace transform of the Dirac. There is a certain h x of t that corresponds to that which we will call often h of t and which is the inverse Laplace transform of h of s. It is a particular response. Now, this particular response is named the impulse response of the system and it is exactly what it means. It is the response of a kick into the system. Now, the interesting part is that we have an approximate expression of any function f, any input f, as a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of delta of t minus k epsilon times f of k epsilon times epsilon. And what we see is by linearity, the response of the system to such an input will be the sum of the response to every single component here. Therefore, what we will get is that the response of the f so which I will call x1 of t uh, to the first component of f will be simply h of t 
times f of k of sorry one times epsilon times epsilon times delta of t minus oh and uh, 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 and and since it is uh, the response to a slightly delayed delta of t minus k epsilon the response will be not h of t but h of t minus epsilon okay so it will be a delayed response to delta of t minus epsilon now x2 of t will be h of t minus 2 epsilon so it's the response to the second component here okay which is delta of t minus 2 epsilon times f of 2 epsilon times epsilon same for x3 etc etc to obtain the response x we just sum up from k equals 1 to infinity of the xi's of t and we obtain that it will be epsilon times h of t minus epsilon times f of epsilon plus h of t minus 2 epsilon times f of 2 epsilon plus etc 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 knowing that when t minus k epsilon is less than zero then h of t minus k epsilon is equal to zero okay so take note of this expression we are almost finished we can then write that x which is the sum of the xi's will be equal to epsilon times oh and that's x of t sorry will be equal to epsilon times the sum from epsilon is equal to zero to uh sorry k is equal to one to infinity of f of k epsilon times delta sorry times h of t minus k epsilon which i can again approximate as an integral which is the sum from 0 to t of f of t h uh, sorry h f of tau let me rewrite this okay so it can be approximated by the integral from 0 to t of f of tau h of t minus tau d tau which is also written as f star h of 
T where the star thing is named the convolution operator okay uh, by the way this is totally consistent with what you have in your notes and in particular what you have in the book in Ogata you know that the Laplace transform or the inverse Laplace transform of a product is a convolution so the inverse Laplace transform of h of s times f of s which is x of s is the convolution of h and f which is a function of time and which is x of t let me add a few hats wherever needed okay so there is nothing particularly incoherent except that using a little bit of hand waving but not that much instead of learning the formula from Ogata we have actually derived it now this is very important for the purpose of understanding the true value of the Laplace transform 